America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moment of silence. Uh, since our since our last meeting, uh, a couple of people have passed that I want us to think about uh, during that. Paul Holmes, who was the the father-in-law of um, Wayne Carroll, who was on the uh, the DPW, um, passed away right after our last meeting. And of course, Ava. And I'd like you, you please keep in your thoughts Ava, her parents, her classmates, her teammates, her teachers, her counselors, all people who have been affected by that loss. This meeting is being recorded and televised by the Women Hanson uh, by WHCA. I'd like a motion to approve bill and payroll warrants. Uh, so moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Uh, next. Accept correspondence in the read file. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Public forum. Now is the time for someone to speak on an item that might not be on the agenda. And it may be on the agenda in the in future times if what you said was really important. Approval of meeting minutes, open session, May 23rd, 2023. So moved. Second. Is there a second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. And under new business, uh, would like to um, appoint a town accountant subject to successful negotiations of a contract. Mary Beth? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sean Kane, uh, the treasurer collector, Ken Lytell, assistant town accountant Paula Holland, and I uh, held interviews for the new town accountant recently. And we all feel that Karen Clancy is the best candidate for the town accountant. Karen has worked for the town of Duxbury since 2015, both as a payroll administrative assistant and as a budget analyst. Karen has great experience in the field of accounting, and she has had um, other municipal experience since the year 2000. Her experience, coupled with her wonderful personality, make her an excellent choice for the town. We'd like to request that the board appoint Karen Clancy to the position of town accountant, effective Monday, July 10th, pending successful negotiations. And if Karen is not here yet, um, she will be here for um, the executive session portion of this meeting. Okay. And everyone has received her uh, resume. I sent that all out yeah. earlier, yeah. and she's an excellent candidate. Okay. okay. Would someone like to make a motion? I will make that motion. Second. Is there any discussion? I'd like to thank the, the committee for... Uh, for. I think she'll be going through fair diligence. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, we have um, the next uh, schedule of events. We're going to open a public meeting with respect to the application of Platinum Automotive Sales Corporation, Colin Emerson, for a Class II water dealer's license on the premises located at 10 Buckley Avenue. But immediately after we open that meeting, we're going to uh, go into executive session. And we're going to go into three, four executive sessions, actually, right after that. It should probably take about an hour or so. Um, the first ex executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, um, Exception 1, to discuss the physical condition or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual or to discuss uh, the discipline or dismissal of or complaints of char or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual. And number seven, exception seven, to comply with or act under the authority of any general or special law or federal grant and aid requirements. The subject that of that executive session is going to be the Platinum Automotive Sales Corporation. When that is completed, we'll go into an executive session pursuant to the second executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Exception 1, to, to discuss the physical condition of mental health rather than professional competence of a police department employee, and Exception 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body. Uh, and that would be for uh, an extended leave for a police officer, extended sick leave. It's 
The next executive session, approximately around 6.45, that would have been approximately at 6.30, would like to, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Exception 1, to discuss the physical condition of mental health rather than professional competence of a police department employee, and three, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body. And that would happen next. And that's for an extended sick leave also for another police officer. And then finally, the last executive session <clears throat> pursuant to uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Exception 2, to discuss strategy sessions, preparation for negotiations with the non-union personnel, or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. And that would be with the, um, with the recently uh, appointed accountant. So could I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Voice vote? Yes. 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 We are in executive session. We're probably going to be in executive sessions for about an hour. Okay, we're back in open session. That first item under old business <clears throat> has to do with the flag display and painted crosswalks for Pride Month. Uh, as you know, we, we um, at our last meeting, we, we discussed this. We asked for uh, some uh, advice of counsel. We received that advice, and uh, we were going to take it up again today. Um, as a result of... I, Michelle, did you want to speak first? No, actually, I'm fine. If there's any questions, I'm going to defer to Peter. He um, spent okay. quite a lot of okay. time on the research on this. Right. Um, we were being, we were following the advice of counsel before that meeting, we were being very cautious about this. And we want to make sure that we understood the distinction between public speech and private speech. We didn't want to, we didn't want to do anything that would encourage uh, public speech, uh, pri private speech that we didn't particularly care for. So we, uh, we decided to take a take a break and then look it over. And Peter has done a lot of work over the last couple of weeks, um, and uh, so has one of us, like Justin. He's been giving forwarding, um, <laughs> bothering, forwarding example, forwarding examples of things that we could do. Uh, one of the things that occurred uh, that occurred to me, um, based upon the material I received from Peter and from um, from Justin, was that the board could simply proclaim. Uh, some actions that the town officials could take in, in, in order to uh, provide support for members of the LGBT plus community, Q plus community. And so based upon Peter's work and based upon one of the examples that Justin furnished to me, uh, which actually came from the Braintree City Council, um, and this is almost word for word from the Braintree Civic Council, except I'm an English teacher, so I changed a few things, and I also tried to bring uh, 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 some, bring Peter's uh, recommendation into it. I'd like to read that proclamation and ask that the board uh, uh, consider voting it. Uh, and this will be a proclamation <clears throat> that reads as follows. Uh, and Peter has gone over this um, for grammar too, and he's picked up some of my mistakes. So. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, whereas the rainbow is widely recognized as a symbol of pride, inclusion, and support for social movements that advocate for the LGBTQ plus community. And whereas the town of Whitman is committed to supporting visibility, dignity, and equity for all LGBTQ plus members in its diverse community. And whereas celebrating Pride Month provides awareness and encourages support and advocacy for LGBTQ plus members of Whitman's community. And whereas it is essential to acknowledge the LGBTQ plus community's impact on the cultural, civic, and economic success of our community. Now therefore be it resolved that town officials take all necessary action to paint the crosswalks in a rainbow design in town, on town li library property. Number one, from the parking lot toward the ramp side entrance by the playground, and two, from the front entrance out. 
Also, that progressive pride flags be displayed on the grounds and flagpoles of Town Hall in recognition and support of LGBTQ plus Pride Month in Whitman during the month of June. Be it further resolved that each member of the community has dignity and value, and the symbolism of these crosswalks and flags is a reminder to all of us to embrace the principle of justice for all and to eliminate prejudice wherever it exists. And my, uh, my, my, my thanks to the Braintree City Council for, for uh, coming up with this. Um, does someone like to move that we adopt this? I would love to move that. Okay, anybody? Is there a second? Um. I, we're not going to have a discussion. Well, we need we need a motion oh. to be seconded before we have a discussion. Oh, okay. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that motion. You made it. You seconded. Okay, we're up for discussion, folks. I'm I'm I'm, I'm taking um, discussion from the from the board of uh, okay. from the board of selectmen right now. Okay, um, I'll make I'll make comment. Um, I feel that. Town, uh, town buildings, town property should be strictly uh, used in displaying of flags would be the American flag, the state flag, the town flag, and maybe the uh, um, you know, um, just an action, MIA flags. POW. Or, huh? The POW. Yeah, a POW flag, you know. Not for something like this. Um, we are a town, state, state, and town property. Uh, I'm not against, I mean, if, if people want to display whatever they want to display on their house and their private property, that's up to them. They can do it. But as far as town property, I think we should stick to, as I said, uh, state flags, town flags, and uh, American flag. I mean... I think we're opening up Pandora's box by doing it that way because maybe somebody else will come in and want to uh, fly a different type of a flag. You know, I mean, if I, if I, I, if I could ask, yeah, before you go on, I'd have ask, an issue with it. If I could ask Peter to um, to clarify here, the the reason for it's being a proclamation is it's not it's not someone coming to us. It's the selectmen, the board of selectmen for the town, saying that we would like to put that we we proclaim this. And the, Yes, that's that's correct. Correct distinction. We talked about we talked about um, having a, a policy, which would have include some of the things that that the Brian's talk, I mean that Dan's talking about, um, and we talked about having a bylaw, perhaps, done. But this was the way to get it done now, and it's and it's a way that we're not going to be in in any kind of jeopardy from any other group or any other any group of people uh, if we um, simply. Proclaim this as a number of towns have done. I uh, I went to a soccer tournament a couple of weeks ago in Norton, in Norton, or Norton, as you say, and I was really impressed by the fact that as I drove by the uh, the building where the, the police and the fire were, um, there was a, a a board like the board we have outside the town hall that can change that was blue and yellow, and it said "Pray for Ukraine." The town had no problem saying pray for Ukraine for probably a limited amount of time. Um, I personally don't think we should have a problem for claiming this at all. Peter, do you want to add anything? Uh, no, sure. Just just to um, detail um, what you were saying about a, a proclamation versus opening up a, a forum. So uh, my understanding, um, you know, from the last meeting is that the board wanted to make sure that, um, you know, if this, if you know, the crosswalks are painted or, or flags are flown, um, that it's clear that this is a message that's being conveyed by the town um, and not by any third party group on town property. Um, but this is something, uh, obviously, the board would have to vote and approve, but um, this is the board speaking on behalf of the town to say this is what right. we believe in. And there, there is a difference when it's the government speaking. The government can choose to speak or not speak um, without opening up a forum um, for everyone to speak, or you, there are other occasions like public comment when you do open up a forum for people to speak. But by doing a proclamation where it's clear that you are speaking on behalf of the town, um, I believe it falls squarely in the in the realm of government speech, um, and you can choose to fly or not fly any flags in the future um, because it remains your forum for speaking on behalf of the town. 
Thank you, Peter. Um, just a, a clarification. Uh, <clears throat> we were under the impression when we come up with this that the uh, that library had signed off on it. That the uh, that the uh, the head of the uh, head of the library trustees had said that this is this is going to be okay. Um, got a lot of positives from 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 the library itself. Unfortunately, the former chairperson of the library trustees is no longer on the board, and there is a new chairperson. And they t this was brought up at the last week's meeting. They had a meeting last week. They meet every third third uh, Thursday, I think it is. And they had a meeting last week. It was brought up. It was brought up. We asked the library director to, to bring up this because we were going to have this meeting tonight, and um, they tabled it until they had more information. They wanted some more. We well, wanted the kind of information that Peter has already given us. So I sent them. Pe I sent them Peter's four or five page uh, essay on on this kind of speech, and they will be taking it up on the next meeting. So if we vote this tonight, we're we're voting it. And it just says we're um, resolving that town officials take all necessary action. One of the actions that they have to take is to um, have the library trustees vote yes uh, at their at their meeting next week. So it's sort of it's subject to that. And that's it, it, the library trustees are in charge of the library. They're in charge of that property. It's town property, but they're the ones that has to go through. Um, That's all I got to say about that. Yes. Well, I think that's it's one of the things that makes me really support this initiative that is that they're collaborating. It's a group of really active citizens in town who have done a lot of good and played an active role in town over the over the you know recent history, and they're collaborating with the library. And the library does things like support women's rights and you know. Um, Native American rights and African African American rights. And to me, it kind of feels like it's on the spectrum of of civil rights and the way that the library would celebrate those kind of things. So that they're working with the the library um, to do this in the way that it's really positive in the community is something I really support. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. I just have one comment. If when we vote this, if it's voted. The vote should also um, include to accept the donation. That comes. Um, that will be that will be second. We have a for this to happen. Uh, um, we have to vote to accept the donation of flags and service, and we will do that. We will do that next. That's the second item on the agenda. Perfect. First item okay. on the agenda is to deal with the proclamation. Okay. Perfect. I also have a second question. Um, the sidewalk's going to be painted, right? So it's not Pride Month. It's Pride Forever. You know. Yeah. And I thought about that. Somebody said, "Well, why don't you just put chalk on it?" That means that we're that that would mean that we, we are recognizing the value of the LGBTQ plus community before it rains. And once it rains, we're not we're not caring about them any longer. It's yeah, it's yeah, uh, it would be right. That is a, no, that is, that's not right. That's ridiculous. That's a that's. I'm sorry, Kyle. No, it you put paint down. I mean, it paint forever, mm -hmm. uh, right? It's going to be painted, and when it wears out, it'll be repainted and repainted. So it's not Pride Month. It's Pride Forever. I, can I ask a question? Um, because we do, uh, we're all elected, and we're only elected from the people. And I have heard a lot of people complaining about this, but not for the reasons people are arguing about this. It seems everybody support. I haven't heard one right. person exactly. that has not supported the community. I've heard no prejudice. They're very upset over it with the location. And the location is right across from the Holy Ghost Church. I just wonder, and it's just a question, and please don't laugh at me, but it, could this be put somewhere else, like at the park, which is a town property? Or we have the uh, beautiful boulevard as well. I honestly don't want to see our community torn apart over something that I swear to God on my grandfather's grave has not been a single thing I have heard. No one has any sort of ill will towards the pride flag. It's really on the longevity of it, like Dan mm. says, and where it is located. 
John? Um, well, I was looking at the library's strategic plan, their most recent strategic plan and, and the prior strategic plan. And one of the things that they've been working on is how to build out their outdoor space in a, in a, in a way that I think can really celebrate some of the things that they do inside. I would be curious to hear some of their feedback, but for me, the way I interpret this is they're working on their outdoor space on things that are naturally celebrated inside the library. What you would see on the walls inside the library or the monuments or the, the things that we celebrate there are, to me, things pertaining to civil rights in many ways and, and our, our nation's history. And this is, again, this is, for me, just a, an extension of a, a, another piece of civil rights that we're celebrating. It is, it is in the parking lot, right? It's not a, this isn't actually a crosswalk, right? It's a crosswalk. It's, it's yeah, it's, it's a crosswalk. It's from the parking lot to the building, from the front entrance of the building across that little driveway. It's not on a public street. It's on the library's street. property. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a really full agenda this evening. Um, I I I can't entertain all of the public comment, but I what I would like to but if Brian had, had put his, his his hand up, Rosemary had put his hand up. I'd like to hear what they have to say, and then uh, if we have no further uh, discussion to uh, to vote. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bram Zanson, 74 Rock Street. Uh, many of you know that I've been on this board for 18 years. And I've been a member of this community for, let's call it 60-ish years. Um, when I saw this on your last meeting, it bothered me. But it's not going to be what you think it is. In those 18 years that I ran here, especially you two in the middle, know the kind of crap that I get thrown at, that I was a homophobe, transphobe, Islamophobe, all this stuff was all nonsense because I cared about what happened in this town. And it was about the nuts and bolts of this community, not about social justice. That's not our charge here. Our charge is to tax, spend efficiently, make this government effective for all the citizens. It has nothing to do with anything about anything else. And for you to overstep your bounds like this, you're making a huge mistake and you open up Pandora's box. Now I have a few uh, statistics here, if you'll indulge me a minute. The, uh, I believe, like Dan, the American flag, the state flag, and the town flag are the only flags, the only flag flags that should be on the town property, period. By the opening Pandora's box, you're going to create everybody and their brother coming up wanting to do signs, uh, flags. That's going to be a huge problem. I respect town council here. I've worked with them for many years. I've done a lot of research on my own. I have an acquaintance who sued the city of Boston, Hal Shirtliff, because he was denied a Christian flag after they put the pride flag up and several others. He sued and lost in court, went to the appeals process, lost in the appeals. He went to the Supreme Court. He won. They had to put the flag up. And that's all about being fair. But guess what? The Satanic Temple came next. They wanted to put the satanic temple flag up for their convention that was in Boston. Do, does Whitman want to have this nonsense? It's not about pride. It's not about that at all. It's about government doing the job that they're supposed to do and not create social justice warriors out of the people that are elected. It's You've got too much to do. You've got balanced budgets. You've got to hire and, and, and all this stuff. You don't need to muddle the, the water with all this stuff. It makes no sense. So the ACLU and the Biden administration agreed the city cannot open its flagpoles to private groups, social groups, without flying or excluding groups with religious views. 
So expect the Christian flag to come your way and the Star of David and the Satanic Temple because that's what's going to happen because you're going to open the doors to that. So I'd like to ask especially the two gentlemen that I serve with the most of the time. Why all of a sudden now with the Pride Month? Because the U.S. State Department recognizes 10 months, 10, Black History Month, Women's History Month, Arab American History Month, Jewish American History Month, Asian, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander Month, Caribbean American Month, Hispanic Heritage Month, Immigrant Refugee Month, Military Appreciation, National Veteran and Family Month, and Pride Month. In my 18 years, not once did any of you take those other nine and push, well, let's have Italian Heritage Month. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Napoleon. You guys never said that ever. Ever. And if you ask me, well, why didn't I say something? You know why? Because I knew it was wrong. That's why. Because now you're pandering. Because all these other people have just been oppressed as much as anybody else. Anybody else. Now, here's a group that I think deserves a little uh, time. Veteran deaths. Six, over 6,000 suicides from veterans. Who's talking about that? Homeless veterans. Almost 20,000 homeless veterans. Who's talking about that? Drug deaths from overdose. Over 100,000 from drug overdoses. Who's speaking of that? Alcohol deaths, alcohol-related deaths, 140,000. And if you say that I don't know what I'm talking about, I've had two, two close family members die from drug addiction. So don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Nobody's talking about that. Except, Kyle, you did. You spoke about drug addiction for a long time. And I appreciate that. But I just don't understand why this would even be a problem. Because you're here for every citizen not a few. In Massachusetts, 4.9 percent of the people claim that they're non-straight. 4.9 in Massachusetts. 1.7 percent worldwide. Yet this board is going out of their way to, to cater to a certain group and not the rest of the community. That list of 10, if you do one, you do them all. You're opening up a big can of worms. This riled me up. And Kyle, you mentioned that this is a, uh, all on your own. You guys did this all on your own. Well, when in fact, Mrs. Diorio sent an, uh, all departments email to everybody begging to put the flag up and to do Pride Day. I have a copy if you want it. So this didn't come just by will and nilly out of your own. So you, you need to get your facts straight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for yes, considering. Mary. I'm sorry. Be my guest. I apologize. Thank you for considering this. Um, I I want to I want to point out that it's true that we serve human beings and humans' uh, ability to thrive, and um, and and I, I com I'm compassionate about the veterans' deaths, and and I think we do. Um, have examples in our towns that we honor veterans with monuments and other things, and we could definitely do more. We could definitely do more. But I also want to talk about a number that you said that, that is not accurate. It's 17% of children identified as gay in Massachusetts right now, 17%. 50% under the, uh, the Trevor Project, which handles children um, struggling, right? 50% of those children seriously consider killing themselves, seriously consider taking their own lives. I want to pause on that. Half of those children, I have a child 
that looked at Scott Lively signs and knew that that man put legislation. We've talked about that. That was scary for me. That was scary. And there's a lack of those symbols that we love our children. We love our children the way God makes them. I am also a Roman Catholic, and I go to that church two times a week. And, and I want to quote the, the Pope, our Pope on this, where he says, we're not supposed to discriminate. We're not supposed to marginalize. We shouldn't create the pain. And I'm, I'm going to take exact quotes that, that we're supposed to invite and love. So in, in that regard, I would, I, would, I would say that this rainbow says we love our children. We love our citizens. And, um, and think about safety. We're thinking about the safety of children right now. We have had a whole section. You think about a birthday, you know, your birthday or your birthday month, and you wait for some symbol that somebody cares about you. If somebody didn't call you on your birthday or do something, you would feel like nobody cares. We've gone the whole Pride month of June, and we've told our children we don't care in town hall. And I appreciate Mr. DiOrio's efforts in saying, and even with my child, He's, he's worked, my child in this regard, saying it's, it's good to be who you're born to be. Please consider those 17% of our children. I understand some passions about a flag there, but we're adults. We're adults. And that's a, that if, if it can just be a piece of fabric for us if it's going to protect kids to see a symbol that say they're, the adults here care about you. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Yes. I, I think where I differ with, um, respectfully, with Mr. Bizanson is that when you look at the mission of the library, and I, again, this organization is partner, partnering, as I understand it, with the library to do this on library grounds. The mission of the of the Whitman Public Library is to seek to be the heart of its community by providing residents with a wide array of popular and educational materials in both its physical and virtual spaces. The library also aims to deliver the resources and services to patrons which facilitate personal and intellectual growth. I think this is one example of a way that we can celebrate civil rights in our community, but there are a number of ways, lots of ways that the library celebrates um, civil rights within the library community, both in its physical space and otherwise. So I think this is one one way that we can we can do that, but there are many others that that could happen as well. You know, so for me, that's yeah. thank you, Sean. Uh, are we ready to vote? Okay. Uh, very very brief. Very brief. Thank you. I think our flags are sacred flagpoles and certain symbols. A proclamation showing the acceptance within our community is a wonderful idea without taking the physical steps of placing flags or crosswalks. But a proclamation that's in the paper, that's publicized, that could be mounted on a uh, board at the library showing that the Board of Selectmen had voted to proclaim Pride Month. Uh, something along that nature would be a good gesture, a wonderful way of showing acceptance, and perhaps could satisfy many. Uh, matter of fact, that's what Abington has just done. Uh, a week or two ago, you said other communities, you know, they have a proclamation, they do not fly flags. And then I would uh, ask to please send something to the bylaw study committee so that we can have uh, written rules and procedures right in place. Thank you. Okay, you ready to vote? I would just like to roll back. <clears throat> I won't belabor it. I just want to add that this is not really some groundbreaking step that the town is taking. Um, in the years pre-COVID, there was a pride flag in the library for a number of Junes. Um, the COA had pride flags in the flower boxes for about a year, and since the killing of Sergeant Chesna, I believe the thin blue line flag has fallen on the back of the, amp uh, the fire engines for a couple of years now. So I just want to, this is not some groundbreaking new step. I don't know if council knew all those, but um, <laughs> that's been government speech in the past. This is continuing that process. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, I just have one procedural question. 
Yes. Yes. This is you know no this is you know this is not a a, a public meeting this this is an open meeting you you are here I just want to for us to do our work. That's all. You said this is under old business. Yeah. So it's a uh, continuation of the time when someone came forward to bring this to your attention for a uh, review and vote. Correct? Is that correct? Yep. Yes, that's my understanding. So under that theory, you made Sorkman Evans leave the room. Under that theory, it's a continuance. He should have to leave the room. Uh, Michelle, could you Michelle, please handle that? No. Sure. Yeah. Would you like me up there? or? No, you can do it from there. Okay. So I, I think I need to clarify a few things. The prior meeting, the context that was presented to me was that there was a request being made by an immediate family member of a sitting selectman. And my advice, I had very short, as I've said to all of you, um, independently, <laughs> I had a very short time period when that question was asked. Um, our office takes the position when it comes to any public official that the conflict of interest statute is a personal liability. We can tell you how we read the law, but we do not give advice to individual elected officials because that would be a conflict of interest because you're getting um, a benefit that is not available to other. Um, you're using your position to get a benefit of legal advice for your own personal reasons. So in the situation that it was presented to me on the afternoon of the meeting, I provided very, very conservative advice because I did not want to have the town manager explain anything that might open an elected official up to even the infinitesimally small chance of a violation of the conflict of interest statute. And so what I said was that if an immediate family member is coming before the board to ask the board to take some action, there is the potential that that could be viewed as a conflict. And my best advice, my most conservative advice, is that the individual should recuse themselves. And when an individual recuses themselves, I always advise that they leave the room so that their presence doesn't continue to cause any influence. At this point in time, what is before the board is something very different. At this point in time, and it, it might be hard for everybody to, uh, to see the nuances, but it is no longer a request from a third party or from an individual person or a third party headed by an individual person to take some action for that group. That's not what's before the board, because if you did that, you would be creating that public forum whereby any requester, be it a Christian flag, be it a satanic flag, be it any type of flag, you can't say no to one once you open it to all. That's not what the board is considering, and that's not what the board is doing at this point in time. At this point in time, you are taking government speech. Government speech, you control. Government speech, you are making on behalf of the town. You are not taking the action at the behest of, or to grant the request of, a third party. So that is the distinction of, and I do not believe, given those circumstances at this point in time, that there is any conflict, even the most conservative view of it. But I defer to the member to have gotten his own opinion, which I believe he has done. I, I did, thank you. And, and I did call state ethics the day after our last meeting. Um, their concern was not that there was an actual conflict, but the appearance of undue influence because my wife was one of the mm -hmm. people making the request. Um, as such, I filed a disclosure with the town clerk's office uh, saying that I can continue to carry out my duties as a selectman even though my wife is involved in the request. So I, from that perspective, we're all good. And again, at this point, that request is no longer before you, the board. Right. The board is considering um, adopting a proclamation, which is government speech for the town. Thank you. Okay, we're ready to vote. All those in favor of uh, the proclamation, please uh, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Three to two, it passes. Thank you. Thank you. You're be ashamed of yourself. Um, may I make a request? Yes. Okay. Um, I know you've gone over and you have a long um, agenda. Um, 
and I know there's something else under old business that I, that you probably want to do next. But after that, could I request that you take the 7.30 p.m. executive session sure. out of order because notice was given of that, right. and I don't want to get too far we'll do, we'll do that next. from the notice. Thank you. I'll just, just, just to, to, to finish this, uh, this business up. I'd like a motion to accept the donation of Progressive Pride flags and other services and supplies from the nonprofit Whitman Pride and Capital Letters Incorporated. Some motion. Second. And there's a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Three to two. Okay. Thank you. And now we'd like to go into executive session. Yeah, Chris. Yes. I'll be in the same room with that piece of crap. <laughs> yeah, one too many. More people came back now. Yeah. Say down again. Let's see, what's the next item on the agenda? Point to motion. Okay, we're, uh, we're out of uh, executive session now, and we have a, a couple of things to report from executive session. Uh, <clears throat> we voted in executive session to to appoint the uh, to to uh, town accountant the town <laughs> to take care of the town accountant's contract. We voted in executive session to give the town. We agreed on during negotiations with the town accountant on a contract. So therefore, the appointment that we made subject to that has, has happened. And I'd like to vote now in in open session to uh, announce an open session that we voted uh, five to zero to accept the terms of a contract. So you need another motion? Sure. A motion? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. We also, uh, we also settled a contract with the uh, deputy chief. So in executive session, we, uh, we agreed to a contract for, for uh, deputy chief bombardier. So someone I'll make, like, someone I'll like to move. I'll it's, make that motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Now we're at the chairman's okay. report. Yeah, the chairman's report. I just have, I have an announcement uh, that on June 23rd, the Massachusetts walking tour will be visiting Whitman for a group hike at 11 a.m. through the town park in Hobart Pond and an evening concert at the Whitman Town Hall at 6 p.m. The Massachusetts Walking Tour has organized a grassroots bipedal trek annually through the Commonwealth to raise awareness of recreational green space throughout the state and create folk coffee house style musical events in each town. This June, with the help from Gateways to Nature and local volunteers, the 12th annual Massachusetts Walking Tour will offer a series of daily public hikes and free community concerts each while walking with their backpacks and instruments from Holbrook to Rockland. Hmm. For more information, please visit www.masswalkingtour.org. And I'd also like to take this time to pass out the FY24 liaison assignments. I've talked to each of you all about these. Um, but if you have any, if you've thought it over and you have to, and you want to make, suggest any changes, um, just give me a call and let me know and we'll take care of it at a later date. Well, you and I are in the red, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and that's that. And we'll go on to the rest of the new business. Vote to authorize the Assistant Town Administrator, Kathleen Keefe, to sign payroll and bill warrants. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote to renew the pool table license for Memorial Field Association Incorporated, doing business as the American Legion Post number 22 through April 30th, 2024. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Make the FY24 annual appointments. I have a list of annual appointments here that <clears throat> move from affirmative action representative to matron. There are six pages of uh, annual appointments. Um, I'd like someone to move those. I'll make a motion. Second. Is there a second? I'm not going to read them all. all right, come on. I'm not going to read any of them. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to announce board committee vacancies. The AAA Advisory Committee needs an alternate, an alternate delegate. Uh, the vacancy is for 2024. 
The bylaw study committee has two vacancies to 2020, 2024. The capital committee has one vacancy, 2025. The Conservation Commission has one alternate member vacancy in 2024. The Community Preservation Committee has one vacancy in 2020, to 2026 and one vacancy in Recreation Commission Rep indefinite. The Economic Development Committee has one, two, there's a vacancy um, from the assessors, the assessors rep, 2025, a vacancy for the Port of Appeals rep, 2024, a vacancy for the Planning Board rep, 2024, two vacancies at large, 23 and 24. Fair Housing Committee has one vacancy, 2024, and the Recreation Commission has one vacancy, 2025, two non-voting member vacancies, 2025. like to consider a request of Murphy, Lamar, and Murphy to increase the rate for legal services. Mary Beth? Uh, yes, we receive uh, normally a letter each year. The services now are 205 per hour, and uh, the new rate effective July 1st of 2023 will be $215 per hour. Okay, would someone like to move that? I'll make that motion. Second. No second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I do. Um, they did this last year, if I remember correctly. And I think for me, it's, I feel more comfortable, certainly coming from the Finance Committee, with some sort of backup. And I'd also appreciate it, this is in line with the, kind of our, our budget cycle. This is coming after town meeting, and like I said, without, this is a 5% increase without any backup, or just about 5%. So for me, I, just to waive this as an increase doesn't feel like we're doing, a, me, I'm doing my due diligence. So. I'd like to get more information from them as to why the increase, and and also I'd like to send a message that it would be better if we knew this prior to town meeting so that we can integrate into integrate it into the the budget process. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion or thoughts? Yeah, I have a question. Do you know offhand if we increase that budget in Article Two? I know I don't believe that. Uh, although that is one of the line item transfers that right. we have coming up, I don't have that information with me whether we've increased it. Um, and this year we had quite a bit come up with legal, as we all know, right. um, with the various departments and issues before the town. So I am actually doing a line item transfer for that line. And we can always we can always uh, control that by the amount of times we call it, mm -hmm. call them. So Correct. we can control well, that number, even though they get in more per hour. We can control it. I know, I just, boom, calling them. Anybody else? Yes. Well, I think, I was thinking about that too, obviously, and, and I think I'd, I'd also feel better if I could review some of the past months as far as how do we use legal, mm -hmm. because it's not something that's that we're all privy to. Mm -hmm. So having some sort of report, I know there's, I think there's a monthly report that they send with a bill or whatnot, so even if I could re review some of the bills so I get an idea of the... I mean, I have some idea, obviously, of how it's used, but the day-to-day -day use of the that line, that would be helpful for me. Absolutely. Um, and we can have those, you know, with the invoices for you as you sign the warrants um, to review that information. And I'll request that they can give us a heads up. I think each year it's usually done around this time of year, mm -hmm. but it would be, um, you know, a very good idea to know what they're looking at for a percentage for an increase for the following year. So I can request that we have that at budget time going forward. I think normally it's done this time of year every year, but we certainly can ask for good. more information. Anybody else? What is the effect of that increase? July, July 1st, 2023. Okay, hearing nothing else, all those in favor? Aye. And opposed? Abstaining? Yes. I'm opposing just because I, I would rather what get the information before. Right. Mm -hmm. Captain, the Social Recycling Cooperative Intermunicipal Agreement Extension, effective July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2028. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Or second. Mary Beth? So this is an agreement um, that has been in place um, for many years. I believe it started, the terms of said agreement were extended on July 1st, 2003. So it goes back quite a few years. Uh, the Board of Health budgets or has for 23 and 24 $3,750. 
uh, for our costs uh, for people in Whitman who uh, use this service to um, dispose of solid hazardous waste. Um, and this is something that is just done routinely. Um, and this contract is for five years, 2023 through 2028. Uh, the company that they have been using uh, right now is uh, Trident Environmental Group. Then normally what they'll do, of course, is just um, go out and find um, whichever company has the lowest prices. And right now they have switched around over the years. Currently it's with Trident Environmental Group. So. Has that been moved? Has it been moved and seconded? Yes. Okay. I believe. It, do we make a motion? Yes. We did. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Act on the request of the Plymouth County Retirement Association to accept Chapter 269 of the Acts of 2022. Mary Beth. Yes. So the Plymouth County Retirement Association uh, votes a 3% COLA for retirees uh, each year, and they have always voted that. This year, uh, they have the opportunity to give an additional 2% uh, to the retirees, and that's on based on the first $16,000 of their pension each year. Um, so I did reach out and ask what the average regular pension is for Plymouth County retirees, and it's $26,454. So it's, it's the average pension is not a large pension. Um, this will increase because nothing is free. This cost, um, the additional 2%, will increase the fiscal 2025 assessment by approximately $67,964. Now, we are on track with the actuarial valuations uh, to go through 2029, and then uh, we'll just have a small assessment each year going forward. The Plymouth County Retirement Association is currently not using the new mortality tables which they more than likely will move to. And um, normally you would think that they would have put those into effect a couple of years ago, but with COVID, they just held off on that. But I do think that they will move in that direction. When that happens, that will increase assessments. And I think at that time, the board will look to extend that um, time frame for uh, finishing out the actual aerial uh, valuation for the unfunded liability from 2029 to at least 2030, I would think maybe one more year. So after that, um, you know, the town won't be paying the huge assessment that they pay. Um, so this uh, really does help, um, you know, the retirees, especially uh, many of them that, that don't have a large uh, pension. Uh, Social Security Administration granted a COLA of 5.92% in 2022 and an 8.7% increase in 2023. Um, and that is on the full Social Security. So this increase here is just on the first $16,000 of retirees' pension. Mm. Thank you. Has it been moved? It's a so one year yeah. only. It's just this one year. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> Act on the request of Lori Dondero Erna to hold the La Vida Ibella 5K on Sunday, October 1st, 2023, subject to the root of the race being approved by the Chief of Police. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Chief. Hi. Oh, hi. You must be I'm Lori. Lori. Yeah. How are you? Good. I didn't know if you had any like questions or oh, uh, anything. Does anyone for have me? any questions? Or are you are you free to run a 5K on Sunday, October 1st? Chief, <laughs> yeah. any, anybody want to run a 5K? Any issues, Chief? Uh, I don't know what the roof the race from is. That's right here. Uh, oh. I did briefly look up on the charity in the past that it was yeah. run in Newport, in Rhode Island. Yes. Okay. So I've done. 10 of the Hanover turkey trots. So that's why I went to Mary Beth and I was like, in Hanover, we do it a little different. We have to get everything, you on board, DPW, um, fire department, our insurance listing the town as a third party liability. Um, I kind of was like, help, with how do we do it in Whitman? Because we want to bring the race to Whitman because obviously we're all from Whitman. The girl that ran was in charge of the race previously, lived in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. So we kind of did it in a park and because mm -hmm. We don't have the backing and the support an hour and a half away at 7.30 on a Sunday morning. <laughs> I mean, I could barely get there at 5 a.m. But yeah, nice. so we did, I kind of mapped out a route here. 
Um, Tommy O'Toole has graciously offered to get whatever permits he needs to as well for the race to end at his establishment outdoors um, for serving food. I, don't, the, I believe he's got to get a one-day liquor license as well. Um, but I, it, I did map out the route going down Rainer Ave or up Rainer Ave, as you, if you will, down Essex, around the park, and then back the same way we came. That was about the only thing I could get. I know some people are very, you know, when it comes to a 5K, it has to be exactly a 5K or they get very upset. I see that right. You haven't, you haven't received this yet, I guess. I, I have not. Okay. Um, I have one question. You have a rain date? No. If it rains, you still run? If we run in the rain. Most 5Ks don't give you a rain date. You run in the rain. Okay, I'm just... I just get lucky. Can, can you just... I have to knock on wood now. <laughs> <clears throat> What if it snows? It better not snow in October. <laughs> Although last year when we had the race, it was that one day in October that it was like 30 degrees mm -hmm. and it was super windy and I think 75 people showed up and the papers were flying everywhere. It was, it was awful. <laughs> but I've done the turkey trot in hand over 10 years and knock on wood, we've, we've been very successful every year. Rain once, that was it. Lori, can I ask? You sure how, can. how long does the race last? How long would we be shutting the roads down? So if you were going to run, I'd say you could probably do eight-minute miles, mm -hmm. be all set. No. <laughs> um, generally, the runners are in within 40 minutes. Walkers take a little bit longer, but um, for, I'd say one hour tops. Select so like not to go to anybody else. And I, would, I definitely would negotiate the time, depending on what you think is the busiest time. Yeah. I know, I believe your football, your youth football, do they still play at that field there? On Essex? Occasionally. Occasionally. They play at the high school most of the time. Okay. Great. Great. What day is that? Is that a Sunday? And I would love to, I could sit down and talk with you anytime. If yeah, there's anything the, you want to. Um, the issue I see is the rotary. <laughs> so I didn't want to go around it. Yeah. I just wanted to cut through way. it. Cars are going to want to go around it. Right. And, and so that's the corner of 58 that's going to be an issue. So okay. Suffolk Street uh, would be a. Uh, yeah. Right. And maybe a cut through, which is going to shorten your distance a little yeah. bit. And so maybe we can make up. We'll figure it out. Um, we've done the triangle from the high school back to the high school. That's um, fairly efficient for us oh, as far as manpower. So um, it's a Sunday. Yeah. Oh, no big deal. It is the, a uh, Sunday. The Rosen does the charitable one as well, which is also on the Sorry, agenda. And that's the following weekend. Uh, but his route is different, so... Mm, it's the weekend before, I think, this year, the 24th. Oh, the weekend before, you're right. Sorry. Will you be able to work with Laurie? Yes, Chief to absolutely. Work yourself? Okay. We'll get it done. Mm -hmm. So, okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Right. There you go. It's you and the Chief. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laurie. Good luck. Thank you. And I'll see you on race day. All of you. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> I used to do those. Um, okay, the next item is to uh, act on the request of Homestead Harvest, Liz Wilson, for a one-day liquor license on the premises located at 30 Temple Street, Unit C, for the following events. July 9th, 2023, farm-to-table dinner event with wine from 6 to 9 p.m. On July 23rd, 2023, dinner event with wine serving 20 people, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., and on August 6, 2023, pasta making class with wine, 12 people, 400, um, 4 o'clock p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and this would be uh, subject to our receiving the licensing fees. Right. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. This is the new place, right? Any, any questions? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Right. After on the request of Richard Rosen on behalf of McGuigan's Pub to conduct the 13th McGuigan's Pub 5K road race on Sunday, September 24th, 2023, to close off Legion Parkway from 12 noon to 5 p.m. and a one-day liquor license to serve from a tent set up at 16 Legion Parkway, subject to receipt of license fee. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. I've had it every year. Favor. All right. Gonna be running a lot of races, huh? Gonna be running a lot of races. No, we're gonna run. Act, act on the resignation of Michelle Lamatina from the Community Preservation Committee, effective May twentieth, twenty twenty-three. Your so, motion. So moved. Your second. Second. Okay. And we'll accept this uh, letter of res resignation with regret. All those in favor? Aye. What a shame. 
authorize Chief Hanlon to make additional offers to police candidates on the civil service list. Chief. Yeah, good evening again. Um, so on May 23rd, I requested the board to call for the civil service list for a police officer given the current staffing concerns and we do have an additional two officers who are going to retire in the next few months. Uh, that request was voted on unanimous, unanimously in favor of calling for the list. Um, there were 13 candidates who signed the list saying they would accept the position. We started at the top um, and concentrated on the first six candidates and they are all spectacular. Um, so according to civil service rules, if we're requesting two, which we did, um, we, we are basically bound to the top five, but if you want to, um, if someone washes out or something in the background doesn't come out, you can pass them over for, for another candidate. That isn't the case here. So the case here is to stick with the list as it is. Um, I'm going to give you a very short uh, synopsis of, of each candidate, um, but I propose to recommend the first three candidates, and I will get to that um, why I'm doing that in, in a minute. So the first candidate uh, was Roger Kenevy. In a very short summary, he's been with the Plymouth County Sheriff, Sheriff's Office for the past four, four years as a corrections officer, and he was also a Marine. He was awarded the Purple Heart for an incident in Afghanistan in 2013. He grew up in Weymouth, but has resided in Whitman for the past two years and enjoys the Whitman community. The second candidate is Joshua Kelleher, Mr. Kelleher is a lifelong Whitman residence and Whitman Hanson grad, as well as a Bridgewater State University graduate. He's currently with the Barnstable Department of Natural Resources and a volunteer with the West Barnstable Fire Department. He also completed the Basic Reserve Intermittent Police Academy in 2021. Uh, Mr. Kelleher is also in the hiring process for the Environmental Police and informed us that he would accept the offer. He's a little bit further along in that process than he was in ours, um, but he hasn't been informed that uh, that he's been offered the job so he's kind of in a precarious position and the th the which brings us to the third candidate which is why I'm requesting three should he take the environmental job or decline uh, you know he, any one of them could decline if we made these offers um, so the third candidate is Alyssa Andrews she's been a resident of Whitman since 2002 Whitman Hanson grad also Southern New Hampshire University with a criminal justice major. She's currently employed by the TSA at Logan International, and she also volunteers a lot um, with the Holy Ghost Parish at the Pine Street Inn in Boston from her, uh, from her application. Um, they also uh, completed essays that I included in an email. Um, I don't know if you've gotten those yet, but um, I recommend that the Board of Selectmen vote in favor of offering the first two candidates conditional offers of employment and the third candidate a conditional offer based on there being a position should one of the first two candidates be unable to meet the conditions of employment or decline the offer. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Anyone have any questions of the no. Chief? That's a good move. Makes sense, makes sense to me. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Very good, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. All oh, written people, I like that. Me too. That sounds like good crew, too. Good, good character. Back on the request of the Historical Commission to dispose of 28 items, with said items deemed disposable as follows. Items broken beyond repair, items have no context with the history of Whitman, items that have irreparable water stains, items moldy, dusty. Right. Right. We have, we have photographs of the others. Yes, yeah, I think you asked me for some. I'm Molly Schnabel. I'm the chair of the Historic Commission. It's nice to meet you all. Uh, and we just reorganized, and I'm still the chair. <laughs> so, um, we are in the process of uh, trying to get our office into a really workable research office for historic records uh, and to help people with... Uh, their, the information on their own property and houses. Uh, we have received CPA money for the registration of our next uh, 100 buildings, we hope, or sites. Uh, we've already done quite a bit, and we have 16 sites that are um, designated by the previous research to go to the National Trust. So we really need to use most of our space for the work that we're doing on the research. And um, 
commissions are not necessarily places where people store things. We leave those more for societies. In other words, we'll verify Aunt Hattie's hat, but we won't keep Aunt Hattie's hat. So um, when we were looking through the office, we've had one workday, and we're going to do another workday this week, hoping to get everything into the files. So let's say you came to us for uh, information about the Baptist Church. We have now got all of the, we've done this much work. All the Baptist Church information is in one file. So we're trying to get everything into files and have the research easily attainable. We can't with the amount of things that we have. Plus, um, as I said to Mary Beth, uh, we're not, we're not uh, experienced at getting rid of things. We're kind of more like keeping things. So the things that we have identified that I've given you pictures of have either deeply embedded dust, footprints on them, mold, or have absolutely nothing to do with Whitman. Um, and we have felt, though, that some people would like to have them. I know that uh, Mr. Campbell had suggested that they take them for the society. However, um, I've done a lot of archive work, and uh, mold has a habit of jumping. Mm. And I don't want to see the things that he has so meticulously cared for have mold or uh, some of the other ingredients that we found on some of these things. Uh, if you find anything that you think is worth us trying to preserve, um, we can try to preserve it, but I think most of the items that we've identified, and they look much better in these pictures than they do on, on the just floor at this. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, as we were we were going through them, we were kind of laughing. They look much better in these pictures than they do in real life. Uh, we would like to dispose of them, but we would like to leave them. We will keep pictures of the things, and we'll identify a day that if people want to come pick pick through them, if they want to take any of them, they're welcome to do so. But I don't think we can afford to have them old. Okay, uh, I really think, and we do have one of our members is now wearing a mask because when she goes into the office, she has problems with it. So, okay. and if I could answer any questions you have about the, the pictures, I'm happy to do so. <laughs> this is uh, one of the banners. This is the only thing I don't have, one of the things I don't have a picture of. But you can see the water stain, et cetera. We don't have the finances to deal with this. We did find several banners that we gave back to the uh, groups that they had them. And the only thing that I do have pictures of uh, that I think that we will probably approach is the American Legion. Because those, those are in pretty bad shape, but they may want them. And I've already talked to uh, the fire chief tonight about the fire... Uh, we have several that are copies of the fireman, and he's already given them to us, so we'll take them out of the frames, and the frames are in pretty bad shape, and we'll keep copies of them. But those are not on your list. Do you have a day in mind when you're going to invite people to come in? Well, I know we're going to be here on the 24th uh, this weekend to put everything in files. We'll have tables out in the hallway. But uh, we haven't come up with an exact date. We figured we'd wait to get your permission to destroy or okay. offer Okay, so we but we, we also wanted to make sure that we identified to people that they could be taking mold home with them. Yeah. And, that, and that can be a real problem. Okay. Okay. Yeah, th thank you. Do, do you need a you need a motion from the, from the I, board? I don't know. Do, I believe I have to have permission from you all to remove it from the office, which is why I'm here. Is there, is there a motion to allow? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Just be careful. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thank you. Hopefully, uh, very soon we'll have a nice office for you to be able to do all, any research that you need to on yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you do. Nice job. Okay, we have a series of uh, line item transfers uh, to go through. Act on the request of uh, Treasurer Collector Ken Lytle for a line item transfer in the amount of $600 from line item 585, Treasurer Collector Expense, to line item 252, Debt Service. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, act on the request of Chief Clancy for a line item transfer in the amount of $7,500 from line item 16, Salaries to Expense. So so motion. Second. Oh, that's so, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Act on the request of Town Administrator Mary Beth Carter for a line item transfer in the amount of 40000 from Medical Life Insurance Town Match to Legal Services. <laughs> so moved. Second. For second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Act on the request of Town Administrator Mary Beth Carter for a line item transfer in the amount of $15,000 from Medical Life Insurance Town Match to Unemployment. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Act on the request of Town Administrator Mary Beth Carter for a line item transfer in the amount of $5,000 from Norfolk County Agricultural High School to Vocational Transportation. So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Act on the request of Town Administrator Mary Beth Carter for a line item transfer in the amount of $45,000 from line item number 20, Norfolk County Agricultural High School, to line item number 14, Facilities Expense. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Act on the request of Library Director David Aronson for a line item transfer in the amount of $34,000 from Salary Assistant Library Director to Electricity, $31,500, and Miscellaneous Expense Library, $2,500. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, right. Last item on the agenda is, July. well, not the last item, but the next item on the agenda is to set the July meeting schedule. July 11th, is that? That is what we said, July 11th, July 11th. would be good. Okay, we'll probably not be here, but that's okay. Oh, too bad. Okay, July 11th. Uh, town Administrator's report, do you have anything you want to talk about, Mary Beth? Sorry, I had a question. Yes. Oh. Question about this meeting schedule? Yes. Yeah. Um, are we only having one meeting in July or two? Right now we're scheduling one. Okay, and then if, and if, if the need if arises, need a, it, then, yeah. Yeah. two weeks later probably. Now, I think you had asked for a, uh, to talk about the um, strategic, strategic plan on July 11th. How would you like to make a report of this, the way you see the status of the strategic plan that night? I could maybe do that. I think it. I, I think, think that might help us out a lot yeah. to go through your filter on, on what, what's, what's happening, what needs to happen. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Great. Maybe I could sit down with. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Indeed. Quickly, um, the Cultural Council summer concerts will be taking place, um, and the first concert is coming up this Thursday, June 22nd at 6 o'clock. They have others scheduled for June 29th, July 6th, the 13th, and the 20th. I would like to request that the board vote on use of the Town Hall Auditorium in case of rain. That's all they need. In case of rain, they need permission to come inside. Someone like to move that? I'll move. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we always do it. Yeah. And I have two other quick items, if I may. The veteran services officer um, interviews, we have that uh, job posting out there. We've gotten in about uh, four um, applications, so I mean eight applications. Four of them have been veterans, and that is a requirement that we have. So we'd like to start scheduling some interviews, and I just didn't know if there's anybody on the board that would like to participate with Sarah Lansing, uh, Kathy, and myself. Is there somebody that might be interested in that, or? Who's the liaison? Well, since you put me as a liaison, is it okay if I do? Yeah, I, I would yeah. love to. Perfect. Great. Great. Okay, and then an update on the um, assessment. The principal assessor. The board of assessors did hire a new principal assessor, Wendy Jones. She holds her mass accredited assessor uh, certification, and she's scheduled to begin employment on Monday, July 3rd. Okay, thank you. So we're filling these positions, you know, we're getting there. <laughs> right now we have the BSO open. So, okay, thank that's you. Last one. That's it. And we've already taken care of the executive session that's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. um, under old business, we could. That we were thinking of, uh, of putting off until July, but I'm not sure there's a reason why we can't deal with it tonight, if the, board, it, if the board's pleasure is to do so. And that's to uh, act to appoint John Canizo to the position of Auxiliary Administrator, effective June 20th, 2023, through June 30th, 2024. And as a result of this action, Mr. Canizo's appointment to the position of Auxiliary po Special police officer will terminate effective end of business on June 20th, 2023. Um, I'll make that motion. I have a question. Uh, okay. Second. Okay. Yes. My question is is it a paid position or no? Chief. <laughs> Sorry, Chief, you back up. 
<laughs> so he gets paid for the hours he works. Um, it, it's the same rate as he had previous as an right. auxiliary special. I mean, and, and who schedules him? I mean, if he hangs around the station, does he get paid if he's just hanging around? He's not hanging around the station. Okay. No, just specific job duties that he does. You know, I mean, I don't know if he, if he has a set schedule so you know, so you can control his hours. Uh, yeah, it's, it's usually about 24 hours a week, okay. give or take, okay. but okay. as necessary. A new schedule? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Kevin Chandler, uh, President of the Whitman Police Union. I stand before you representing the Whitman Police Union to draw your attention to our opposition against the appointment of John Canizo. Uh, John Canizo is a non-union part-time employee who is a special police officer but has since been decertified from post. Since John Canizo is no longer a certified police officer, the union would stipulate that only a certified police officer should oversee train and schedule other police officers, including auxiliary officers. In 2022, John Canizo's job title was listed as an auxiliary police officer. The union contends that John Canizo performed the functions of vehicle maintenance as well. Uh, the union questions that if a town is appointing somebody to a municipal job title, the job, the job opportunity should be put out to the public uh, for any potential interest and a proper interview process should be held. <coughs> and currently we do have a fellow union member who is out of work seeking medical attention due to allegations against John Canizo, even after trying to come to a mutual agreement with the administration on the matter, has failed, and when an internal investigation is currently ongoing, John Canizo is still on the agenda to be appointed. Uh, to appoint someone who is currently under an internal investigation could send the wrong message. Um, it is the union's recommendation that the board continue to table this appointment until the internal matter and all other relevant matters have been completely resolved and satisfactory to the board. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone have anything to say? Makes a point. Okay. If no one has anything to say, is there, there has been a motion? Yeah, I made the. I, I, I'll read. Um, uh, how would I put it? This Take my motion here. back. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so you don't. Does anyone want to move this? I'll pass the. I'll pass the Galvan move. I move that we um, appoint John Kanizer to the position. And I'll second that. We can't table it. Chief, you want to chime in on this? So the, the, the reason for this change is, uh, in one sense, necessary because, as um, Officer Chandler pointed out, um, Officer Kanizo can no longer be um, an auxiliary, a sworn police officer. So that's really the impetus for this whole change. It's a, it's a change in status more than anything. Um, he, his training and experience going back through all of his previous positions, um, both with this town and outside of this town, uh, make him qualified to do everything he's been doing up to this point, as well as moving forward into the future. So. Um, as I've explained before, he, he runs a pretty tight ship with the auxiliaries who are remaining. He schedules their training. He doesn't necessarily train them. He can schedule it. Um, all of that is done at the direction of the administration of management here. So um, he's acting um, under our authority, really, mm -hmm. and um, usually comes up with pretty good ideas. So. Um, the current auxiliaries, as well as a bunch of uh, many former auxiliaries who have since moved on um, for a lot of different reasons. Some went to full-time positions. Um, these auxiliaries were trained to uh, a higher standard than most other auxiliaries. They've gone to uh, field sobriety testing, which normally doesn't happen with other auxiliary departments. Um, emergency vehicle operation course, which doesn't happen usually in uh, other departments that have auxiliaries, so um, he's coordinated that and he's done a, well, a fine job at it over the years. I don't see any reason to uh, dismiss him based on the union's complaint. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Sean. I respect your your um, your opinion and I support what you say about Mr. Canizo. You know, um, can you speak to the process though, where some of the, the your you're bringing up an issue with the process of hiring somebody without non-union internally. Can you speak to that a little bit? Like, has it 
does the police department do that? Has they done it before? Is it past practice for this? You know. Well, the uh, the post commission has been new as of police reform. So the police profession itself is going through sure. a number of changes. So I can't really speak to that. Right. No, that's Thank you. Anyone else? I have a question. Well, why is it not being offered to the public as well, in addition to him, to apply for it? Well, if we listen, if we listen to what the chief has said a couple of times, uh, John Canizo is, um, has years and years of experience. Right, to but be I meant as handle, opposed to, be able to, to hand this handle this administrative position. But I meant to the to what the um, other gentleman said with the union. As the, the, the union really doesn't have any say in, oh, this, in this hiring. It's not a union position. They have nothing to say. So it's it's just going on um, what Mr. Chief Hanlon says well, we're, we're, um, because he's has a, a history of working yeah. here under him. He, he, yeah, I would see no reason to hire anybody else for the position. Number one. Um, and again, um, you know, he's held the position and done done the job. Mm -hmm. So I go on past practice as a uh, yeah. future predictor of the success of the department. And How long has he worked for the town, for, for under you? Uh, off and on since before I came on. He was an auxiliary um, officer. He was uh, involved in training early on before I came on, um, and then he came back, I believe it was 2011, and he's worked consistently since then. He's, you know, worked for the Sheriff's Department in transportation. He's worked for Duxbury PD as, uh, as a dispatcher, and as well as here. So he knows the ins and outs of this department. He knows all the cruisers. He knows all the people. So that's why I've made this recommendation. And but, we, of and, course, would have and, records of and, all of that work of every year that he was, yes. when he was hired. Yeah. And as well as, um, we tabled this last time to hear the union's issues, and they've been heard. <clears throat> and they haven't been dismissed, but at the same time, um, they haven't been validated either. So that's why we're here again today. Okay, thank you. Yes, this is the, for the, the chief. So this, the requirement that we create this, I think you said it last time, is, is because now auxiliary police officers have to go through the academy rather than the abbreviated or, or whatever we used to do. Um, had that change not happened, this would have been an annual reappointment like all, every, all the ones we just did. Yeah, the six pages that we, we right. just kind of... Yeah, his did, name yeah. would have been right on that list right. okay, to, yeah. for reappointment. Um, and... So police standards, they want to make them standard for a reason across the board so there aren't any um, discrepancies between what a full-time officer has for education and uh, training mm -hmm. and, and a part-time officer. And that kind of avoids a big potential issue with, you know, they're, they're acting and doing things that they haven't been trained to do. And so um, we're putting them through, they made this bridge academy mm -hmm to basically bring the part-time people who have uh, a number of the part-time academies up to full-time status, and that's what they did. And so they included the emergency vehicle operations course, they included all of the uh, firearms training, and they included all of the defensive tactics. Those are the hands-on. They have to pass the same tests, so it's 200 total hours of additional training that they went through, these auxiliary officers. Okay, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, all those, all those in favor? I'll go with it. Opposed? I have to oppose. Okay, okay thank you. And that clears, uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. And we, um, that clears the, clears the agenda. A motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah.